Hey, Hickok45 here. As you can see, I'm making a revolver, and I'm I'm to the point now where I'm ready to install the barrel and barrel shroud. Uh, I've been doing a lot of a lot of hammering and uh, gunsmithing here, so it is time to get the barrel uh, secured. So let's put that back on or put it on. Yeah, I think that'll work. I made this little ring to kind of hold the barrel shroud on, and. I had to make this wrench, of course, to uh, make it handier, you know, so that I could keep it good and tight. I want good accuracy out of any guns I build. There we go. Let's see if that's right. Yeah, it looks good. Okay. So we're all right. Yeah, how's that look, guys? Not bad. Uh, first time building a revolver. Actually, none of you fell for that, right? Uh, <laughs> yeah none of you even if you're 10 right or 15 or 85 this is a Dan Wesson model 12 and it's a little different as you noticed it has the capability of interchanging the barrels in fact they would come back in the 70s and 80s in a pistol kit uh, they call uh, yeah pistol kit they called it you might get a case I remember a fellow showing me one in the 70s. It must have been around 75, I guess. It was at a shooting range, someone's back field, actually. Opened up that kit and showed me this thing. I guess it was this gun, and or one very much like it. This is the Model 12, and there's some different variations of it. I think an external nut, an internal nut. His, I think, had an internal nut. I don't remember the external nut like that sticking out. It might have been. I remember it being kind of ugly to me, the gun, not him. But uh, it had a pistol pack with this and all these barrels in there. It was really interesting. And uh, I was a Smith & Wesson guy, so it was just very strange to me. Because I know you couldn't do that with a Smith & Wesson. You couldn't even do it with a pipe wrench, probably. Uh, but anyway, that's, that's part of the claim to fame with the Dan Wesson revolvers, the fact you could uh, switch out the barrels. I never, quite honestly, I never really liked them that much, but they are quality guns. And I think anybody that knows that Dan Wesson, you know, name and has uh, shot these or knows much about them knows that they are quality guns. This one comes from uh, the gun parlor in Worcester, Massachusetts. All right, uh, a donation to the cause. You know, they've supported us in the past and have helped us out with some firearms. Good people. We met them at SHOT Show uh, owners and, and uh and uh, so anyways, this is from them. So we appreciate that uh, from the gun parlor. We have a lot of viewers up there in that area. I know that, that shop there. So he uh, asked, said they had one of these and wanted to know if we wanted it. I said, yes, I do. Because we get a lot of requests for this firearm. And while it's not been my favorite revolver, it is a lot of your favorite revolver, okay? So, uh, and I'll have to say, since I have it in hand, it has grown on me because I, I have heard since the 70s, you know, people bragging on the things like, oh, they're so much better made than a Smith & Wesson and all this. I said, yeah, yeah, right, okay, you can have them. The big ugly latch on the wrong place and uh, barrels that slide on and off and uh, the sight's kind of ungainly looking. Yeah, you can have them. But they're very practical. I do remember I was doing long range silhouette shooting in the uh, 70s, a competition, and there were people who had these, people who bought these just for that because they are famous for being accurate and for being well made. A again, uh, I think most, I don't know, a lot of people would tell you they are more accurate than a Smith & Wesson or Tars or name any others, that they're just built, built really, really well. You know, I mean, after all, Dan Wesson was uh, with the grandson of the Daniel Wesson. And he started this company, I think it was back during some of that time period where Smith & Wesson was bought out by the European company maybe, and uh, set out to make a better revolver than, uh, than they had even been making. So that's kind of the, the history there, back through the 70s, 80s, 90s. And of course now they're owned by CZ, Dan Wesson is, and uh, they pretty much have quit making revolvers, I think. And. Uh, so anyway, the Model 15 replaced this Model 12, and it's the one that you see the most commonly. All right, this one's not quite as common. This is an older one. All right, so, but that's kind of neat. Uh, have an old, let me take a couple shots with us, show you that it shoots even after I uh, built the barrel and put that in. Let's, we, let's go and put some Magnums in, all right, and uh, try them out. So we got, uh, I'm gonna get my ears on tight because this is 357 Magnum. I have shot this thing. 
Why don't we go ahead and take out that watermelon while I've got the magnums in it? All right. <laughs> that looked pretty magnum, and I think a magnum would do a better job of smoking pot, too. What did I tell you? What did I tell you? Probably, oh, you know what? That cowboy is lined up with that uh, two liter. Let's see if we can get two, two hits here with one bullet. Yeah, didn't do it that time. Maybe because it was more powerful. That got him though. <laughs> that got him. Let's try that green two liter. Did he fire five or did he fire six? Or did he fire four? Yeah, I do believe that's it. Okay. Yeah, it has a nice grip. Feels good in the hand. I mean, these guns are designed to shoot. How's that for profound, right? But I mean, they really are to shoot a lot. They're supposed to hold up better than a Smith & Wesson. And uh, they're, they're supposedly built very strong. Just good revolvers. Uh, I think uh, at the time, their goal primarily might have been to build a revolver that would stand up better than the, say, the Smith K-Frame. K-Frame's a great gun. Everybody loves them, they feel great. If you shoot a steady diet of hot magnums, they, uh, yeah, you can crack the forcing cone after you know, a lot of rounds, thousands of rounds. Uh, these were supposed to be built uh, better. Hard to get used to the, the large ungainly sight there as compared with the other models. And then the latch being here, it's just, it's just so different. And uh, instead of being right here, as with a Colt or a Smith & Wesson. But as you saw at the beginning, you know, that barrel shroud simple to get off there. And, uh, and, and uh, I, did, I won't take it back off, but it was interesting. Of course, that's just the shroud. The barrel, actually, I, I was turning it earlier with my hand. You can turn it, and obviously you have to replace that too if you're going to change it to a two-inch barrel or a six-inch barrel, because that is the barrel. And then I, I, I guess you, uh, you just, I don't know, I didn't see any feeler, any gauges in the, in the box. I don't know what they, they might have had with it, but you know how much cylinder gap you, you're supposed to have, basically. I can just eyeball them because you can, I know how much, just a little gap, see a little light between there and just until it's, you know, and then the cylinder turns freely and you're probably okay. I don't know, you might know more about that than I do. But uh, I do know you, want, you don't want much gap there, but you're gonna have a little gap, it's unavoidable. And, and you don't want such a small gap that as soon as you get any powder residue at all on the front of that cylinder, then the cylinder won't turn. So there's a happy medium there. Okay, I know that from some old coals and different things I've had, and I've had to do a little stoning, you know, there. It was a little bit too tight. So, with a stone. All right. Pretty cool. Let's try some 38 specials. Now, this is also, let's see, uh, well, you, you know Dan Wesson to some extent. You might know them better from uh, their 1911s. And I think they started uh, producing those at the uh, end of the century, around 1999. And... That's where I recently have developed a lot of respect for Dan Wesson. For whatever <laughs> respect I should have had but did not because of the revolver look and the differences there, uh, I definitely have gained some respect for the company because uh, the 1911s we, we took in uh, for t and &E, oh, it's that been a couple months ago, from CZ, but they were Dan Wesson 1911s. Those things were class. Those were really nice. And uh, you can check those videos out. Well, they're high quality, no doubt about it. And that makes sense. I'd always heard the revolvers were high quality. So it's just the difference in the, the cosmetics and the way they're made that was a little turn off to me. They also had a round, I don't know if you knew this, I won't charge you for the information. They made a, a, a 357 maximum cartridge that they chambered these things into, which was a 357 Magnum longer. You, know, you got your 38 special, which is not quite as long as the 357 Magnum. Well, this was the next step. It was, uh, I don't know, about that much longer again, and it was called 357 ma uh, Maximum. How clever is that? That's what I'd have called it. And then the next one would be the Mega Maximum, but it you know gave you more range. And uh, these were popular. Like I was, uh, I think I was about to say when I was doing long range silhouette shooting, people bought these things just for that in that 357 maximum especially or this caliber cartridge and also the what was it 445 super mag something i think a lot of people use those uh, very 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 accurate uh, pistols okay revolvers now again if you're standing and shooting yeah you know 
there's so many other factors you know, okay the gun might be a little more inherently accurate but your heartbeat your trigger control your visibility on the sides and all that is about a hundred percent more of a factor than the little bit of difference in inherent accuracy but all else being equal they're a little bit more accurate and then some of the the shooting you do in those long range silhouette shooting is from a rest too so there are lots of different positions where you're actually resting the gun on maybe on the side of your leg or uh or prone or something so so you're actually getting more of that accuracy out of them and you're shooting out of 200 meters uh as far as your longest target let's speaking of that let's just go ahead and wake up the gong uh see where these hit all right popped him good sound let's try a pig because i'm not sure where i'm going that uh, front sight's a little gray hard to see there we go needs a little uh paint on it i'd say there's another round let's see how's this one turning yeah it's going like a colt isn't it clockwise <laughs> he fell reluctantly <laughs> yeah so a cylinder turns clockwise like a colt right pretty cool okay it does uh, have the feel of quality and i mean these things they, at, at this these older ones like this they'll run five six hundred bucks or more it just depends uh, how badly somebody wants one because they're so well made and this one it, it's got to go back i guess into the 70s because of the, the barrel lug and all of that. Uh, and I guess say the Model 15 is what replaced this. So this one has got some age on it, but it really is almost uh, like new. It's like it just came out of the box. Somebody did not shoot it much. Speaking of the box, aren't these old boxes wonderful? I mean, does that look like the 70s or what? I mean, is that the kind of box you would have gotten in the 70s? That is cool. Like those old Ruger boxes or Colt or anything. There's paper like you used to get, I guess. Is that, is that Dan Weston? No, that's Myth and Weston paper somebody put in there. Uh-oh, get that out of there. This might have come with it. I don't know. That vapor paper or whatever they called it. The total handgun. Pretty neat. Got different barrel lengths there, I guess. This was not a pissed part of the pistol pack, whatever they called it, uh, with different barrel lengths. I don't guess this one came with all that. All right, those old boxes are cool. So that is neat. Let's put uh, some 38 special, well, let's put some WIMP rounds in. And then we'll go back to Magnums maybe. Like I said, you can switch around okay if you're not shooting too much and the ammo's not too dirty. You can go from 38 special back to 357 Magnum. So they've, since around 2005, I understand, they've pretty much quit making revolvers. Uh, I believe there are rumors that they might, you know, at some point come back with them. But I guess they're busy with their 1911s now and uh so who knows these dan wesson revolvers have i mean there's a cult following there really is i i have a brother-in-law who i know he's had at least one or two of them and used to shoot them in silhouette shooting uh up in kentucky and uh, and likes them people kind of love them or i don't know if they hate them i think they're just like me they're just not kind of the traditional revolver and uh maybe you know don't choose them but uh they're they're really well made and uh, as i say they're supposed to be the most accurate now this is a weak little round let's see if it'll go through a two liter <laughs> oh man go to town there <laughs> boy did the job oh here's a 12 ouncer let's go double action wasn't ready for that. Oh, nice. Got a pretty nice double action. It's got a little bit of a little bit of uh, strength there to it. It takes. Let's go back to some powerful rounds here. 357 Magnum. Great cartridge. If you don't have a 357 Magnum revolver, I uh, assume you're working on getting one. It's on your wish list. That cowboy looks like he needs a hit. Yeah, powerful one. So is that propane tank. Yeah. 
got another cowboy. Ha <laughs> ha. Wow. <laughs> cool. Oh man. The cases just come out so easily. It seems to be uh, just just a just really good machining. Really nice piece of machinery. We'll shoot it a little bit more. I need to shoot that paper target with something. See if there's anything else I know about it that I haven't told you. Uh, if you're interested in these, you know, you can research them. It might be uh, an option for you. Because I discovered with the Chiapa Rhino that just because something might not be my cup of tea, uh, it's irrelevant. A lot of people like that Chiapa Rhino, for example. And apparently a lot of people like these. So uh, there's got to be a lot of them floating around. Obviously, if you're looking for one, you know, somewhere in one of the auction sites or somewhere, but uh, in gun shops, gun shows, uh, I see them occasionally. And uh, I mean, they're there. And if you want a really well-made revolver and you're not locked into that old Smith & Wesson or that Colt mystique and appearance even, you know, you might, might want one of these. You really might. Uh, just uh, like they say, they're owned by, uh, Dan Weston is owned by CZ now. And uh, they're not currently making revolvers, unless that's changed like in the last month, year, whatever. And I just didn't know it. But then again, I've not been shopping for them. But I thought you might find it interesting seeing one of these if you're not familiar with them. And some of you are. And this is kind of uh, one of their classic models, this old Model 12 with uh, the external, you know, uh, nut on the end of the barrel like that and uh, just a, a revolver like this that is pretty much Colt or Smith & Wesson like Where you can change out the barrel and uh, barrel length if you want to so that is definitely one thing that requires a gunsmith If you have a Colt revolver or you have a Smith & Wesson revolver, I wouldn't be trying to get the barrel off I'll go down here and see if I can uh, put something on paper for you All right All right. I'm gonna hold right in the middle and see where it goes. Yeah, not sure. Boy, I can't. <laughs> I tricked you. I missed. I hit the cowboy. What a terrible shot. I just had to finish up on steel. I'm sorry. Uh, check those out. Pretty cool. As I've said before, I, probably the Smith & Wesson speed loaders, I would say a 686 or maybe even a Model 19 a speed loader would work on that. But it, And I've got a bunch of them. I really do. But it just rarely comes to mind. Uh, since I, I don't compete with a revolver anymore. I mean, I've done that game and, you know, you finish up, you know, click, click, you know, whatever, pow, pow, you get six rounds, bring it down, knock them out, pop them in, and back in action, that kind of thing, which is fun to play with occasionally. But the beauty of a revolver, is it is just, just load the thing up. It takes you a long time to load it, so what? And, uh, and shoot it. They're just uh, they're really great range guns. They're also pretty good carry guns. They're not a bad defensive uh, uh, implement, to tell you the truth. And uh, I know I'm always preaching to you about revolvers because I have enjoyed them so much uh, over the years, even though I've not enjoyed a Dan Wesson until this week. Uh, but I have gotten so much pleasure out of shooting revolvers, and uh, it just keeps me awake at night knowing some of you all have missed out on that. But this is pretty cool. Dan Wesson Model 12. Uh, solid piece of machinery. Life is good. Hi, I'm Zeke with the Sonoran Desert Institute, and here at SDI, we're extremely proud to be sponsors of the Hickok 45 channel. You may be asking yourself, what is SDI? SDI is an affordable, fully accredited distance learning education program. We have an emphasis in gunsmithing and firearms technology. If you decide to become a gunsmith, you'll need to learn proper gunsmithing techniques. And while some people will use an apprenticeship program to gain these techniques, a formal education will ensure an organized, more comprehensive learning environment. But when you choose a gunsmithing school, it's still kind of difficult. So it's very important that you choose a gunsmithing school that meet the following criteria. First, look for a nationally or regionally accredited program. And whether distance learning online or through a brick and mortar ground program, 
A gunsmithing program should always have a hands-on element. And finally, make sure you look for a school with high student satisfaction. Find reviews online, check out its Facebook or other social media, or get on the same social media sites, find some alumni, and ask to speak with them about their experience. And while we're not at SDI today, I do have some of the firearms I've learned to work on and built myself through the SDI program. So let's go take a look at them. Okay, maybe not, we'll just get seriously. Can I not get a chair that fits me? I'm a big guy, dude. So I guess back to what we were originally talking about. Above all else, find the school that's right for you. It's not always gonna be the distance education programs or the brick and mortar ground schools that are for everybody. Just make sure you do your research on multiple options before you make that decision. But if you want more information on our gunsmithing school, just go to www.sdi.edu or call us at 1-800-336-8939.